Welcome back friends. I'm really excited for today's video because I'm finally getting around to a project where I'm gonna demolish these cabinets right here. These have actually been kind of an eyesore. They're something that I built many years ago, but they really don't serve that great of a purpose. So if you looked inside there to see what I store, it's really not working that well. So in place of that, what I'm gonna do after I remove that and demolish it is fix the drywall behind it, patch it, paint it, and then I'm going to install this Weber slat board system right here. So this is the color, I went with the wheat color. So this is something that I picked up at Home Depot. So let's get into it and start the demo. All right, let's go. I just pull it off. Ooh, nice. Here's the first positive thing. I found an ice scraper. So here's a look at where all my indoor videos take place. This is a really nice, handy work corner, but the issue is it's a work corner and that means that there's always stuff laying around. It's kind of messy. So in order for me to make a video, that means I have to clean everything up and that just takes a while. So my plan is, so this is gonna be my workbench right here. These right here on both sides, they're gonna be a pack out storage system and across the top, I'm gonna have pack out crates. So you can see all this back here, that's gonna be the slat board. I'm gonna have some lights coming down. And then right here is an adjustable height work table. And that's where I'm gonna have a lot of my tool reviews so I can raise that up and down depending on what there is. And this will always stay clean. So if I wanna quick make a video, this right here is gonna be my go-to. But with all that said, you're probably gonna see me in this work corner once in a while too. Okay, so now I'm excited because we're at the point where we're done with the demolition part and now we're gonna do some repair work and then work on the installation of the new stuff. All right, so I'm glad now to be to this point where I'm putting the primer on, this should go pretty fast. I spent the last two days doing drywall mudding and sanding and cleanup. So let's get started. Almost ready to do some painting, but before we do, we have a little bit of prep work. So I have this masking tool right here, and the area of the wall that I'm gonna be painting, it's gonna be 102 inches wide and 97 inches tall. So what I'm gonna do is frame that out, and to make it go a little bit faster, I'm gonna use the Milwaukee three-plane laser right here. All right, so we just need that vertical line right there. So the paper is 10 inches wide, so I'm hoping my overspray doesn't go beyond that. So now we're on the final step before installing the wall boards. We have this bare marquee paint, and we're gonna go ahead and paint this wall here on the count of three. One, two, three. I like that color. It's gonna look good behind the walls, so now we just need to let it dry, and then we're going to install the boards. I think it would be best if it just dries overnight. Instead, what I'm gonna do is I have right here a big pile of all the boards from everything I demolished up here. So there's a bunch of nails in them. So in my pack out tote right here, this is where I store my work gloves. This is where I have 
some handy tools like this right here is probably what I'm going to use to pull the nails. If I need something a little bit heavier, then I have this right here. So, all right, let's bring the board up. It's all assembled with 15 gauge nails. So I can actually grab a hold of it pretty well with these, I call them side nippers. I'm not really sure what the term is. So since these boards are worth about 20 bucks a piece and they're still fairly straight, I'm gonna have to find a place to store them temporarily or just put them in another project. So what I've done off camera, I, after painting and this right here, the wall, I took some cedar boards right here, they're one by twos, and just framed out all the way around. And then down here, let me uh, get the camera and show you a closer look. So my garage right here, the knee wall is made of block, and then I have a treated two by on its side, and then I put these wall boards right here, and I just leveled them out. So I'm pretty sure when I lay my first row down, it's gonna lay relatively flat, but we are gonna use these levels right here to make sure that that first row is right. And then we're gonna keep checking it along the way too. So as I go all the way across, I'm gonna have this trim board right here to end at. So it'll just be a nice clean cut. And then I'll start with my next row. So what I'm gonna do is wait until this wall is done to decide what I'm gonna do down here. So I could potentially just paint those blocks, that wall right there, a different color, like a real dark color, or I may end up just getting some more wall boards and then just having it go right down to the floor. And then this summer I have some garage floor epoxy that I'm gonna to apply to this. So that will be a video once it warms up again. So I just wanna take a couple quick seconds to mention the instructions. So first you measure the wall so you can figure out how much material you need. And then you prepare the surface, make sure it's clean, dry, flat, and structurally sound. You may wanna wash it with soap and water. And then they recommend to paint the wall a complementary color to offset the possible gaps between the boards because I'm sure I'm gonna have some gaps. The next thing we have to do is find the studs. So I had the stud finder right here, so I'm gonna go along the wall. And then I'm also gonna just take some chalk and just put some lines on there. So then it's optional whether or not you wanna use construction adhesive. I'm gonna use it because this is gonna be a little more permanent. If it's more temporary or semi-permanent, then you may not want to use construction adhesive if you're just gonna take it down in a short time. And then when it comes to fastening the boards down, I'm gonna use the Milwaukee 15 gauge nailer right here. So some people said they can get by with an 18 gauge. I just feel that something like this, a 15 gauge is the way to go. So I'm running inch and a half nails and if it doesn't seem to work that well, then I have some two inch that I'll go to next. That's really cool, it puts an arrow. So I have all three pieces right here. And I put the level on them, everything looks good. So I'm going to put some construction adhesive on them and then put two nails each into the studs and on the ends. I've only had this 15 gauge nailer for a short time. Before this one, I had a air powered one and it's just so nice not having to have the cord. So let's get started here. All right, that one, they're driving in pretty far. So I'm gonna change the depth adjustment. So in case you're wondering what my setup is here, I have the three amp hour high output battery that I think works really well with this nail gun right here. It's not too heavy and gives you some long run time. So now I'm at the point where I'm about a third of the way done and I'm still checking the level every so often. It seems to be working out pretty well. It's just nice to have the shorter level right here, the two foot, that way I can check it there. And then sometimes when I'm spanning a longer distance, I also have the four footer right here so sometimes when you're going between a couple different boards, you can look underneath and see what kind of gap you have. I wasn't exactly sure when I picked out the background color right here. I just brought some of these sample boards into the paint department at Home Depot and just looked at them. And so far, I think that I went with a good choice right here. This is sometimes not quite as dark as some of them, but also you know darker than the light one. So it's kind of a happy medium, I'd say.
So there's one final step that I did. It's the very bottom piece. I want to have that transition underneath where the wall, the garage attaches to the concrete block. There's a treated two by six or something like that underneath. So I have that covered with this horizontal wall board here. And then I wanted to clean that up and cover that. So I ended up taking another full piece here and then putting that vertical. So I now have a nice transition around that. All right, friends, so I'm really excited with the way that this turned out. It definitely was a fair amount of work. It, it can go really easy, but I just want to make sure that I was doing it right. So let's take a closer look under some brighter lights and I'll move the camera so you can see exactly what this looks like from all different angles. So I was just looking at my empty boxes from the wall boards and I thought I would let you know how I did this. So I ended up using two boxes of the weathered hardwood that gives you some of those different colors there. And then I ended up using four of the wheat color. So I just wanted to kind of make my own pattern that's a little bit different than what they sell. So it's just a little bit more custom than what anybody else might have. So that's the way that I did it. And if you happen to have any questions about the install or any of the tools that I use, let me know. I'll have a link down below if you want to check these tools out. All right, so please let me know what you think in the comment section down below. I always enjoy interacting with you guys. And if you find this video to be interesting, helpful, and informative, please give it a thumbs up and help support my channel. That's it, friends. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Mm -hmm.